What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today's video is something I have been looking forward to for a long time and it's going to be a three to six month project. So I'm very uh, excited to see how it goes and you're gonna be watching some serious time progression uh, in this one particular grand glass video. We're doing a 100% Britannomyces Saison, which is something I've been looking forward to doing for a long time. So I've actually already done a mixed fermentation Saison with Belgian Saison yeast and Brett yeast co-pitched together, and it was a really cool result. Uh, really good beer. I did everything in a keg, uh, so it was a really easy way to keep the Britannomyces from getting into the rest of my brew house. I've been wanting to do another Brett beer ever since, and uh, not long ago, Fermentis, uh, dropped a few packets of their BR8 strain uh, on my doorstep and asked me to do uh, a brew with it. So BR8 is actually the very first dry commercial Brett yeast. There's a few dried bacterial strains out there from Lalaman, but so far no one has done a Britannomyces strain yet until now. So we have BR8, which is Britannomyces bruxellensis or Brett Brux. It's a pretty common Brett strain to use and it's been dried and it's had its STA1 gene removed. What that means is it is no longer diastatic as positive. It's no longer capable of over attenuation. So the reason why this was done is so that you could use this yeast on the secondary side. You could co-pitch it or you could pitch it later in your fermentation or you could bottle condition with it to get that Brett character without fear of that over attenuation and creating exploding bottles due to that extra pressure. So effectively you have a safer way Way of using Brett uh, and a more consistent way of using Brett in this case and I have chosen in this particular video to do something very very much different than what BR8 was designed for and that is doing a hundred percent fermentation with it because it doesn't have that STA1 gene uh, we're gonna be modifying the recipe a little bit uh, from a regular saison in order to really encourage that extra drying effect so the other ingredient I'm really excited to play around with for the first time is French Atomy hops uh, this is a new variety of hop from France. Uh, Aramie is going to have this nice citrus and spicy note uh, that is very different from your typical French or Belgian hop. And uh, I think it's gonna really complement the fermentation characteristics that we get out of this particular type of fermentation. Um, and I think it'll work really, really well in a Saison style ale. So I'm very excited to try that out. Before we jump into the video though, I do have a few organizations to thank. And firstly, Fermentis, uh, actually for sending over the BR8 yeast and uh, a bunch of extra swag and stuff. I really do appreciate that, Hugo. Uh, thank you very much. Secondly, Northern Brewer. So you can find all the ingredients that you need to make this batch of beer on their website to include the BR8 yeast and uh, the Aramie hops. So check them out when you get a chance. Lastly, Clawhammer Supply, who manufacture the system that I've been brewing on for the last two years. And today we're using the 10 gallon 240 volt system. Uh, so you'll see that in action. Check them out when you got some time. All right, so now to jump into the recipe, it's pretty simple. And the reason why it's simple is because we want to avoid complicated sugars. We want to avoid uh, residual starch of any kind and really drive that final gravity as dry as possible to be characteristic of a Saison. So one of the most important things we're gonna do to achieve that is keep the grist really simple. So we're going to be doing eight pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt. This is Franco Belges, one of my favorite Pilsner malts. That's going to get us a decent amount of nice fermentable sugars and some good flavor. And then adding to that two pounds of wheat malt from Weirman. And that's it. That's all I'm putting in the grist. The wheat malt is really just there to kind of give a little bit of puffiness to the beer and to just allow for it to have a little bit of residual character beyond just plain old Pilsner malt. For hops on this beer, I'm targeting about 22 IBUs. Uh, I want a, a lot of expression of the Atomy at the very late boil and a little bit of gentle bittering. So I'm adding in Hallertau Mittelfrühe, uh, one ounce of that at first word hops, which is um, a nice way to add a little bit of gentle bitterness to a beer. And uh, it works particularly well in Saison. So that'll go in basically as soon as the mash is finished and we're draining the grain basket, I'm adding those first word hops into the wort at that point in time. And it'll stay in there as we heat up to a boil and throughout the rest of the boil. And then I'm gonna wait all the way until about 10 minutes from the end of the boil where we'll add uh, one ounce of Atomy, and then at zero minutes, we'll do the same thing, adding one more ounce of Atomy. I'm really hoping that these nice floral, spicy, citrusy notes will come out and they'll complement some of the funky characteristics of the Brett, but also some of the uh, more fruity characteristics of the Brett when it's younger as well. So I'm hoping it works out pretty well overall. The water in this one, I'm doing a variation from my typical Belgian ales, and I'm gonna be going for something that is gonna try and promote that dryness a bit more. So what I mean by that is adding a little bit extra sulfate relative to chloride ions. 
So the water profile I'm targeting is 54 parts per million of calcium, 6 parts per million of magnesium, 0 parts per million of sodium, 42 parts per million of chloride, 99 parts per million of sulfate, and 0 parts per million of bicarbonate, which is going to get me that kind of residual drying effect. It's also going to help make some of the bitterness of the hops pop out a bit more and become a bit brighter. I'm trying to make this beer very drinkable, very exciting, but also have that bread character come through and the hops come through very clearly. In order to get that water profile, I'm starting out with eight gallons of Poland spring water. This is water that should have relatively negligible minerals in it, although there might be some residual minerals. It's just a lot cheaper than distilled and it comes in larger format bottles. I'm adding to that water four grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, and two grams of calcium chloride to get that water profile. Normally with the mash, I would do a Belgian step mash for this particular beer, uh, but Saison's absolutely need to be dry. There's no getting around that. They have to be a final gravity below 1010, uh, and if not, they have to feel very dry. And also because this breath doesn't have that STA1 positive uh, gene, we really want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to keep the mash highly fermentable. So what I'm doing here is instead of doing a step mash, I am just gonna be holding a straight up 148 Fahrenheit rest for 90 minutes. This is going to absolutely promote that I get as much activity from the beta amylase as possible. Yes, there is a bit of alpha in this range that is active. However, I really wanna get as fermentable of a wort as possible, uh, given a reasonable amount of time. I'm targeting a final gravity of like 1009 or a little bit lower, hopefully. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the bread's gonna do. So giving it this nice, highly fermentable wort is the best thing I can do in my case to make sure that it works. Obviously for the yeast, it's going to be Fermentus BR8. Um, they come in five gram packets, so keep that in mind. And for this particular fermentation, I want as much of that in there as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pitch two five gram packets in there, 10 grams total of yeast. And it says on the packet specifically to rehydrate it before pitching. Uh, this is not the norm for Fermentus yeasts normally. They say just throw it in dry. Uh, but for this particular yeast, it says to rehydrate, so we will be doing that. Anyway, guys, I'm very excited to get this brew day rolling, so let's go ahead and get brewing. So I started out by adding eight gallons of spring water to my 10 gallon, 240 volt Kalonheimer supply system and started to heat that up to the mash temperature. As it was heating up, I milled out all of my grain and I measured out my water salts and added those into the strike water as it was heating up. Once I reached that mash temperature of 148 Fahrenheit, I doughed in with the entire grist, stirred it up thoroughly, and uh, let it sit for 90 minutes at 148. However, 10 minutes into the mash, I did measure my pH, and I saw it was a bit high at 5.8, so I added about a cap full of lactic acid into the entire mash, and that brought it back down to a much more reasonable pH. Once the mash was complete, I raised it up to 170 Fahrenheit for a mash out, let that rest for 15 minutes, then pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for 15 more minutes. And at this time, I added my one ounce of Hallertau Mittelfrühe as first word hops and let those sit in the wort as the grain basket was draining and as the wort was heating up to a boil. I set the controller to maintain a temperature just below boiling at about 204 degrees uh, to ensure that we didn't have a boil over as I was heating up to the boil. Once I reached the boil though, I uh, ensured that everything was going well and just let it continue for 50 minutes. Once I reached that 10 minute mark, I added one ounce of Adami hops as well as a Whirlflock tablet and about two and a half grams of yeast nutrient. At the zero minute mark, 10 minutes later, I added one more ounce of Adami hops and I started to cool down to my pitching temperature. As I was cooling down, I measured my OG and I saw a rather high OG compared to what I expected. I was expecting 1049 and I saw an OG of 1055. That probably was an error in my recipe formulation. However, um, still was pretty happy to see 1055 as that's a pretty solid OG. Once all my wort was transferred into my claw hammer keg fermenter, I went ahead and I pitched my yeast, which was the two packets of BR8 and allowed the entire thing to ferment at about 75 degrees for four months. So the fermentation of this beer should be very interesting. So during the brew day footage, you should have seen me using the Clawhammer Keg Fermenter. I used this recently as a pressure fermenter for a New England IPA that I made. However, I'm also using it in this case to isolate all of my Britannomyces uh, cold side activity. By keeping it in a stainless steel vessel and kind of like in that keg format, 
Um, I can actually serve directly out of that and put it in my kegerator if I need to, and that's what I kind of want to do to kind of just minimize the amount of things that that Brett ends up touching. I'm not usually paranoid about sanitation, but Brett does have this nasty tendency to kind of get into stuff. Doing it this way is going to be the most risk averse way of doing it, I think. Now for the 100% Brett fermentation, this is gonna take a long time. Regardless of whether you're co-pitching or not, Brett likes to really take its time. I have no idea what the lag phase is gonna be on this dry yeast. It might be like three or four days. Brett is a much slower yeast in general to not only reproduce, but also ferment. So we're looking at probably an extended fermentation of several weeks, if not over to a month. And then we got to condition this beer and let it just get its character developed uh, over several months. I'm thinking probably four to six months to really get what we want out of this particular Saison. That is a very low final gravity and nice expressive Britannomyces character with that pineapple, that stone fruit, and that horse blanket funk or barnyard funk. Brett also likes to ferment at a very warm temperature, so roughly the mid 70s is gonna be about the sweet spot for it, I think, to both encourage character and also speed up that fermentation. So a couple other rules of thumb here for using Brett, especially at that 100% level, keep the oxygen the same as any other beer. It does benefit from oxygen just as much as any other yeast, um, but you do wanna bump up the nutrients a bit, and uh, just kind of like in the same way if you're using Fike, it's, it's you need to have extra nutrient in the beer to get that reproductive cycle going so that the Brett can take over that beer before anything else does. But otherwise, really, it's just a matter of time. Pitching that bread in, making sure it's got the ingredients that it needs to succeed, and keeping it warm for three to six months. After that, it really should be fully attenuated, regardless of whether you're using BR8 or not. Uh, and at that point, you should be safe to package it as you need to. I would recommend, though, if you're not using BR8, be very sure of its final gravity, because Brett does oftentimes ferment a regular wort all the way down to 1.000 or sometimes even lower. I don't think that will happen with this particular strain, but it can with other strains. And speaking of other strains, pretty much every other manufacturer out there has some sort of Brett yeast available. So refer to that particular yeast's data sheets uh, to determine what to do with your fermentation. This is a bit more of an advanced one, so um, I do recommend you're doing your homework on it. The biggest word of advice I have for you is that if you're using any sort of STA1 positive yeast, you're gonna have monster attenuation, and that includes Brett. So just be prepared for that and plan ahead and you'll be fine. Now, if you wanna get creative with it, given this is a Saison recipe, you can do a lot. You can play around with uh, using perhaps like a Belgian or French Saison yeast, either on its own or co-pitched with the Brett or pitching the Brett later in the fermentation. You can do that. You can also use like a nice funky farmhouse fike. I would actually recommend something like Framgarden or Javaru uh, for a funky kind of interesting farmhouse character to go with your Saison, uh, especially with these Aramie hops. Saisons are awesome because they're just a very creative style. You can really do whatever you want with them. So have fun with it, do something crazy, let me know what it is. But basically just to recap, all I'm doing is pitching that BR8 in about 75 degrees and just letting it stay in the beer at 75 degrees for three to six months or longer. Um, and that's it. Yeah, that's all it needs to do to, to build that character and ferment all the way down slowly. Um, I may or may not spund it. I'm not 100% sure yet how I want to carbonate this one. I might bottle condition it. We'll see. But regardless, it should be a lot of fun and I'll catch you guys in a significant amount of time. So until then, cheers. The fermentation for this beer went Honestly, as I expected for Brett, it was a slower fermentation and it hit a relatively low final gravity. Considering I gave it plenty of highly fermentable sugars to chew on and nothing overly complex in terms of sugars, it actually hit a relatively low final gravity of 1005 and I watched it slowly work from about 10.07 down to 10.05 over the course of two months. So I fermented this at about 75 degrees in the keg fermenter without any added pressure, and um, it just slowly got down to that final gravity over about four months. I was also taking samples during this period of time just to make sure I could track the flavor evolution, and as of now, it's tasting really, really good. So at this point, I basically took that fermentation keg and just put gas on it, and carbonated it up to a relatively high level, as is traditional for a Saison, and put it on tap, chilled it down to about 40 degrees to serve, and we are good to go. So the beer is called Seaside Saison. 
and comes in at 6.6% .6 ABV and about 22 IBUs. For the appearance of the beer, it's a slightly hazy beer. Uh, this haze, I think, is due to the wheat malt and it's really refused to drop out over time, even over the four months of aging that I've given this. And um, that being said though, it's a relatively nice light pale gold color. Um, it's really quite inviting overall. It pours with a really solid uh, off-white head, kind of like a cream colored head. And uh, that head will stick around for a decent period of time, but it does drop and doesn't really leave any sort of layer or lacing uh, on the surface. It's pretty dry, there's not that many proteins left to support the head retention, so that makes a lot of sense. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into aroma. Oh my goodness. That's classic Brett right there. I get a little bit of a sour note, actually. Um, kind of like a pineapple and uh, there's like an acidic note no vinegar um, and I definitely get a little bit of a barnyard character in there as well there's a small amount of maltiness but really nothing too terribly significant uh, but it is aromatic and definitely the, the bread is dominating the aroma no questions asked there so let's go in for mouthfeel now Mm. Yeah. All right, so high carbonation level in this guy, first of all. So Saison, it should be very highly carbonated. So it's definitely upwards of three volumes of CO2 at the moment. And so therefore it has a lot of carbonation spritz behind it as it should. This lightens up the body quite a bit. But also speaking on the actual body of the beer, there is a very satisfying dryness to this. Although, it is not as dry as a traditional Saison can get. So it is sufficiently dry feeling. However, there's a little lingering character that I think is from the wheat that is actually giving it a smoothness um, and a softness. And normally a Saison is gonna be dry and it's gonna be a little bit edgy. Uh, this is not necessarily hitting all of those notes, but it's way drier than it would have been if I had not taken the steps to achieve the mouthfeel that I did. So number one being water profile, number two being very low mash temperature. And a final gravity 1006 is more than sufficient to hit the dryness required of the Saison style. That being said, I think it could go further down, but it is still quite dry and still very, very refreshing and very enjoyable. So now let's go in for flavor. Mm. And this is where it's really amazing. This beer, having been allowed four months to mature and develop and slowly turn into what it is now, is really quite a treat. Um, it's got some sourness to it. So I think the Brett actually dropped the pH down to about 3.8. Now, Brettanomyces does produce its own lactic acid and its own acetic acid. Um, and has the effect of souring a beer in a way. Although at 3.8, it's really just a very mild sourness, not necessarily anything you would expect from modern sour beers and certainly not from Belgian sours. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not really all that sour, but it is a refreshingly sour character. It's heartness. Uh, it really does help a lot of the citrus notes in here to pop out quite a bit. First and foremost, there's like a peachy, lemony, zesty note here. Um, a bit pithy, but overall, definitely high, high amount of citrus character. That might be from the Arami hops. A bit of a, like a, kind of a, a white pepper note as well. And then lots of bread character. So lots of that tart pineapple and peach. Um, and I'm getting a, a small amount of leather. It's very much like a lemon juice or lime juice character. It's like sourness hits you like right here. Um, and it's not overpowering. It doesn't upset your stomach either, which is nice. But really, honestly, it's way fruitier um, than it is funky. 
which is interesting. The funkiness in it really is restrained to a little bit of that horse blanket barnyard character, a little bit of leather. I don't get, thankfully, because I hate this flavor, I don't get rubber or band-aid phenolics, which is great. Um, and that's a characteristic of Brett sometimes, you could throw that. And overall, it blends very well with the rest of the flavors in this beer. And then also the grist being exceptionally simple and having a little tiny bit of wheat in it, as, a, that, as I said before, that little bit of softness, but also it adds a, a nice kind of satisfying malt note. It's very one-dimensional, white bready kind of character, but it is a facet of the flavor of this beer and it adds a little bit of a layer of interesting complexity because you can very easily pick out the flavors from the malts, the hops, and the yeast individually in this beer and it's actually pretty cool to see how they all work together and then break them all apart like that. About a month ago, it was actually very heavy on the acetic acid, which led me to believe I had an infection, but then I did a little bit more research on Brett and found out that yes, it does produce its own acetic acid when it's in the presence of some oxygen. So clearly some oxygen did make its way into the fermenter. It doesn't seem to have affected the color of it at all though, or the intensity of the flavor. I'm not getting cardboard flavors or staleness to it at all. And of course, Brett does also create its own pellicle to protect itself from oxygen, which is pretty cool. I think there's definitely a lot more lactic acid sourness in here than there is acetic acid because it's a lot more pleasant to drink. <laughs> I'm really not a big fan of the vinegar character because that's what acetic acid is, is it is vinegar. Um, and it can be rather overpowering and not a great thing. But lactic acid is a much nicer character, much nicer kind of sourness in my opinion. Um, so I'm happy to see that that is kind of the dominating tartness in this. And then that layer of wild yeast funk on top of this makes this a pretty fascinating beverage. I think the hops balance out quite well. I think there's a good um, degree of uh, blending that's going on here between the outer me and the rest of the ingredients. I mean, we get a little bit of that lemon, that citrus character, um, I think is coming from the outer me, and then the white pepper, I think, is also coming from it. So, uh, a neat thing to see, and a good integration with the rest of the ingredients in here. It blends rather seamlessly, in my opinion. I mean, this is really just a phenomenally refreshing drink to have at the beginning of summer. It doesn't take me long to blow through a glass of this. It's absolutely delicious, really refreshing, and it's perfect for when the weather is hot like this. And while it is four months old right now, and yes, it is in the keg, I do plan on bottling a bunch of this and letting it sit in condition for probably another six months to see how it does with age, because the Brett is an ever-evolving flavor, and I think six months down the road, this is gonna be even more interesting and even more complex, potentially, than it is right now. So um, it's definitely a project that I wanna try, and I'll probably pop a bottle during my annual year-end review video, and we'll see how things are tasting at that point in time. But in the meantime, this was absolutely worth waiting for, and I really enjoyed the experience. So, BRA yeast, it's very solid even on its own um, in a fermentation, and I'm glad that I could put some data out there on the internet to show that you can do 100% bread fermentation with BR8 given some specific considerations to the recipe. I think a coat pitch would probably be a great way to go with this next time. Um, and I think potentially adding BR8 into a secondary fermentation or bottle conditioning with it is a great way to coax out a lot more of that Brett character. Um, and I think it would be really interesting to see what that looks like compared to 100% fermentation like this one. So there's plenty of cool ideas, plenty of fun things to do with this yeast. And um, I'm excited to give it another go sometime because I really enjoyed it. Anyway guys, what do you think about the video? Let me know what you thought about the brew and the process. Have you brewed with Brett before? Have you used BR8 before? Let me know down in the comments section. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons as well. Those really help my channel grow and I really appreciate it. And if you have the time, please comment down below with your thoughts. If you want to support the channel, there's plenty of great ways to do so. I highly recommend picking up a t-shirt like this one. You can find this and many other designs in my merchandise store, which you'll find in the description box. Uh, and there's a link down there. There's also my Patreon supporters who have made a huge impact on this channel, both in terms of production quality and general support. You really do have my thanks. So especially check out that Patreon. And uh, if you like what you see there, go ahead and subscribe to that as well. There's also channel memberships and there's the super thanks button if you feel inclined to hit either of those things. Those also help out quite a bit. And last but certainly not least, there's also the Amazon store where you can find a whole bunch of the brewing equipment, the filming equipment, all the stuff that I use to make this channel run. Uh, a lot of that stuff is gonna be in that store. So check it out when you got some time. I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as the apartment brewer. So check those uh, links out for some more frequent content. When I can't push out videos, as frequently as I want to. I try to make up for it by content on my Instagram page or my Facebook page. So please check them out uh, and let me know what you think. 
And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end. These videos take, uh, well, this one took four months to produce, but they take about 20 to 30 hours of, of actual editing work and filming work behind the scenes. So I appreciate it when you watch all the way to the end because it means that my work is really being appreciated. Anyway, guys, if you're still here, thank you for watching. This one goes out to you. Cheers to summer, and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers. Thank you.